Organizations are counting on teams to do almost everything these days, from designing the next amazing smartphone to making your egg McMuffin. And yet the problem is we don't actually help people work in teams effectively. We just smash them together and hope it all works out. Could you drive me to Starbucks at 7.15? I'm like, I'm not doing anything else. Sure. Like in my pumps, I'm like, I can't even drive in these friggin' things. Um, and so like just getting to the 8.30 a.m. meeting is already exhausting in our lives. Now you want me to have conflict? Really? You are sitting at your desk when an email alert pops up in that bottom corner of your screen. You know that one? The email is from that person. I call it the mother-in-law effect. <laughs> All the things that if your mom said them, it'd be fine, but when your mother-in-law says them. As soon as people hear PhD in psychology, they think I'm gonna have them on the couch. So I always say, no, 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 no. I'm not a couch psychologist, I'm a water cooler psychologist. When is this offline meeting I'd like to go? That sounds like the really good meeting. <laughs> we're gonna say take it offline and we're gonna bury it in a deep hole hoping we never have to speak of it again. Right? That's conflict debt. I've seen a lot of teams that are really dysfunctional, even toxic. And once you get there, it's really, really costly. There had to be a better way. We had to be able to help teams before it got to that point. So the work that I do now is to make sure we prevent dysfunction from happening in the first place. When people start to see that conflict is not the antithesis of teamwork, it's the freaking purpose of teamwork, people. If we didn't have different ropes and different tensions, why do we need a team? We don't. With the clients I work with in Silicon Valley, they relate to it this way. They're like, oh, so conflict is a feature, not a bug. Like, yes. I am pretty edgy about these issues, and because I'm often holding up a mirror so people have to see the things they're doing that are contributing to the dysfunction but always with love. Somebody once described me as the human mullet because I was business in the front and party in the back. And I have to admit, it's pretty true. <laughs> oh, good answer. <laughs> yeah, I got it. So what we need is to find a way to build a conflict habit to systematize conflict in our organizations and take the pressure off to make conflict higher frequency and lower impact. And it took a long time to develop, but this approach is working with team after team after team. I'm gonna tell you all the instructions and you're gonna go back and you're gonna do it and it's gonna make so much less uncomfortable conflict. When people leave my talk and go make the small changes that will improve their team, they get a better team as a result. And that's a better team that they deserve. You're gonna create a lot less defensiveness in your colleagues if you communicate better. You're gonna change arguments into just problem solving if you validate one another. You don't have to wait for some fancy consultant. You don't have to wait for the jerk to get fired. You can change your team from any seat at the table.